right from the first line of the text crawl, The Force Awakens does away with some of our recent sour memories and gives us the one bit of information we need to take away from it. Character we care most about? Check. Air of mystery? Check. Simple enough I don't need to call my accountant for an explanation? Double check. Short, sweet, and to the point. First order, bad. Leah, good. It's perfect. And then this opening shot is as iconic as any in the series. A First Order Star Destroyer sliding into frame, eclipsing the light from the planet while new dark side ominous music plays over top to make sure there's no confusion. There's more going on in this shot than, well, you know. And then the next frame lets us know that JJ's directing, but it will be all right. I can feel him saying, it's okay, I got this. He does. But JJ, a CG BB-8 would be so much easier. Nah, let's just invent a new robot. Real is better. I'm not gonna say it's better than the Imperial March, Darth Vader's theme, but Kylo Ren's music is excellent. Look how old you've become. Why is he wearing a mask and distorting his voice? It's just to draw parallels to Darth Vader. Well, friend, as we'll soon learn, he idolizes, maybe even worships his grandfather. So it actually makes perfect sense. Badass bad guy. Sorry, let me rephrase that. Baddest, badass, baddie, bad guy move that ever was or ever will be. Saber to dude, force stop to blaster beam while force freezing Poe all in a matter of seconds. Come on! Do villains get any cooler? Poe gets it. So who talks first? You talk first? I talk first. And some great foreshadowing for when these two meet later. Washed away are the clean walls, shiny bright CGI of the prequels. In its place, we get dust particles in the air, hand stitched goggles, and dirty clothing. Sand sledding. We always knew Star Destroyers were big, but this gives us a scale never seen before. Instabread. Another remnant of a war that took place long ago. A sneeze and you'll miss a detail that makes Jakku feel so real and old. Where do you come from? Classified, really. Me too. Big secret. Get it? It actually is. People will be speculating until episode 8 drops, and maybe even longer. But seriously guys, she's one of the two main protagonists that was allowed to keep her British accent. Can't we all figure out who her father is? Or maybe it's just because of Unkar Plot. Actually, the droids are not for sale. Saving your new friend. This is very complicated. Honesty. Ray must be a Mary Sue, right? Or does it make sense that an orphan girl left to fend for herself on a planet full of mostly male scavengers would have learned to defend herself or be long dead by now? Star Wars has never really had any trouble when it comes to explosions, but these all just feel so impactful. I don't care if this was filmed specifically for the trailer. It is Star Wars. It's such a perfect clip. I can do this. I can do this. Ray's a Mary Sue, right? Or did her years of being alone scavenging for parts that would earn her food give her a technical and mechanical know-how? And, as will be established throughout, has some serious force sensitivity. She surprises herself with her capabilities. Later she says, I want two ships, but I've never no left the planet. Also, would flying really be that hard? She drives slash flies speeders. I mean, it's not a plane. You're not worrying about wind and acceleration or velocity or whatever. Those are plane things, right? It's more like driving a car that happens to move on the Y axis. Can't be that hard. Oh yeah, and this entire spaceship chase fight scene along the desert and into the Star Destroyer is freaking awesome. Come on, this is what action scenes should be. Deliberate, purposeful set pieces, not shaky cam, jump cut madness. So engaging. Did he just say BB-8? Let's all just take a moment of silence for the lack of a Jar Jar Binks in this film. And rejoice that they created this cutesy comic relief character that is BB-8. <laughs> this is so great, don't get me wrong. Vader was awesome as the unshakable dark apprentice who would have just force choked this guy to death. But isn't this the perfect reaction from a younger, angrier, dare I say more force powerful villain? He may be emo, but I'd love to see you say that to his face. Anything else? I dare you. Got a boyfriend? Cute boyfriend? Subtlety. It's Han freaking Solo and Chew freaking Baka! No, it's true, we're the only ones on board. You can understand that thing? This is less a win for The Force Awakens and more a win for Star Wars overall, but I've always loved that certain characters can understand species like Chewie and R2-D2 despite all logic. And leave it to JJ, I mean Finn, to draw attention to it. You're Han Solo! I used to be. No, you used to be Indy. You used to be Jack Ryan. You will always be Han Solo. Wasn't he a war hero? <laughs> I'm giving JJ the benefit of the doubt here that he hasn't seen the raid, so he wouldn't know how underused Eco is here. Still, Eco's a win. What was the second time? No disrespect to Harrison Ford, but he's been kind of phoning it in for the last few years. 
This is the first time that we've seen life come back into his eyes. He actually seems to enjoy being Han. Maybe it's because he knew he could leave it all on the field. I got a bad feeling about this. No feelings were harmed in the filming of this scene. This might be the only imperfect sequence in the whole movie. But in their defense, every Star Wars film has had at least one, sometimes more, big monster creature. Ultimately, it plays out like a fun little break from the tension since we know our main players are all pretty clearly safe. It had me! Put the door! That was lucky! Humbleness. Snoke's fine, we don't get much of him. But I do like that he holograms himself so imposingly huge instead of just being a rehash of the Emperor. Listen, big deal. Women always figure out the truth. Han always knows what's up. Are you offering me a job? Wouldn't be nice to you. Doesn't pay much. More honesty. So many practical effects, costumes, and puppets. More work went into this long tracking take most Eisley callback than, well, you know. Iconic imagery is iconic. But who is Kylo actually talking to? Keep it, kid. Generosity. This whole vision sequence may not stand on its own for this film more than a question and confusion creator, but it's a promise that this is all thought out ahead of time, and I'm taking that promise to the bank. I also don't think it's a coincidence that both Obi-Wans had a line in her vision. But I know the Force. It moves through and surrounds every living thing. Wait, what? No midichlorians? The Force is no longer quantifiable? It's just there? Yeah, thanks, JJ. For reals. And we'll remember this as the last day! Domhnall Gleeson Hitlers it up pretty believably. See? Ooh, Abrams restrained himself so well, just the slightest hint of a lens flare. Man, this is extreme. Alderaan was rough, but we never actually saw any inhabitants. And this is five heavily populated planets worth of people being snuffed out. Something you may not have noticed, she's not bent over because she's tired from running. Much like her potential father before her, she feels the disturbance in the force of billions of voices crying out that were then silenced. Thank goodness for Stormtrooper aim. Badass good guy. I can feel JJ's fear to overuse the lightsaber battles. So our first actual fight with one is one-sided. The anticipation is palpable, even if this should have been Phasma. Rebels, rebels, reb... I mean, resistance, resistance. Yep. Some actual proof to back up Poe being the best pilot in the fleet. Who are we more excited about here? Leia or 3PO? Tough call. You must be so brave. Maz is gonna have something to say about that. Ugh, such an effective impact just in the forcefulness by which he puts his helmet down. And Adam Driver does not disappoint when he comes out from behind the curtain. What a scene! With no other visual cues, you can actually see and feel the force power shift. Credit to the actors, credit to the sound design, credit to just everybody. I love you all! We will remove these restraints and leave this cell with the door open. I will remove these restraints and leave the cell with the door open. One more hint to Ray's father. Who is the first person to use the Jedi mind trick in a very similar fashion? I also really like that it doesn't work on our first try. I mean, it is 007 after all. And you'll drop your weapon. And I'll drop my weapon. I know I've been praising this movie for everything practical, but goodness is this CGI stunning. And this is Starkiller Base. So it's big. Haha, ha, suck it complainers. Han, here's your quibbling. It's big. Your argument is invalid. What did he say? That it was your idea. Friendship. Female X-Wing pilot is a win. They're in trouble. We can't leave. My friend's got a bag full of explosives. Helping your friends. Let's just talk about the timing of this sun being drained enough to cast darkness across Ren's face so that it's illuminated completely in red, signaling his final push over the edge to the dark side. While I definitely can't win the death of Han Solo, Ford and Driver's performances in this scene are superb. A father's love. Could we ask for a better location for this final showdown? No, the answer is no. The dusk lighting and the falling snow sizzling against the lightsabers? Well done. Well done. And could we ask for a tougher villain? Bro is shot with this gun. And he's just walking it off while preparing for battle. Finally, a lightsaber duel. And for anyone who whined that Finn shouldn't have been able to hold his own with Ren, he doesn't. Watch the fight. This is Ren owning him. He's just toying with Finn. Maybe a little overconfidently, but it's this easy for Ren to disarm him. I've seen this force pull like seven times now. I still get chills. Pure cinematic perfection. Yes, 100%.
hundred times, yes. All the air slash space battles are engaging and not too distracting. Don't get me wrong, they are dense, but not so dense my eyes roll back in my head. I need some help here, I need some help! I'm an enemy. Watch out! Awesomely updated trench run. I hate drawing comparisons, but this is one of the best lightsaber duels. And what is ironic is that it had to take a similar amount of choreography as other battles, but it's completely hidden and everything about it feels emotional, raw, and real. Speaking of lightsabers, how evil looking is Ren's, compared to the clean, straight blue beam of Luke's, clearly constructed by him to be menacing. It looks like it might arc out and cut the user at any given moment. It also appears to be longer and handles more like a broadsword, which is appropriate considering the crossguard. What a great moment for Rey. She finally realizes she hasn't been getting lucky. She can control and use the force to her advantage. And now it suddenly matters that Ren is injured since his opponent is more capable. And a true villain was born. Unless your name is Tyrion, then you become a hero. You got a heartbeat. Finn's alive. R2 is alive. May the force be with you. Oh, it is. Hey, it's Luke. As you've no doubt realized by now, my disclaimer at the beginning ended up being a little more ironic than intended since I went full fanboy. But guess what? It's my channel and this movie is fantastic. It hit every note it needed to and didn't front or end load the pacing. We got just enough lightsaber dueling to satisfy our 10 year itch while still leaving us yearning for more and not too much that our eyes glazed over like looking at a magic eye picture. Each new character was introduced masterfully and all of our favorites were back, even if we didn't get to hear all of them speak. But the ones who did stirred nostalgia that brought me right back to my first viewing of A New Hope but still knocked my socks off like any modern movie with epic spaceship chases, battles, and jumps to light speed. Blaster skirmishes on the ground would never felt more intentional and well thought out. For that matter, every shot feels deliberate right down to this simple pan when Rey puts her staff away. The main story arc was reminiscent of the past, but still held plenty of new and exciting things, and the sorrow and tragedy that has always been a part of these space operas was as moving, if not more meaningful than ever. That's not how the Force works. Han Solo, you will be missed. I can't think of a better send-off to one of the galaxy's most beloved smugglers, rebellion generals, and guy who unequivocally shot first. He chose to save the day again by planting the explosives which directly led to his death. And his final confrontation with his son brought even the hardest of hardened men to tears. Kylo Ren rivals Vader as a threat, but gave the Sith an emotional depth not too often seen from the dark side. Abrams learned from past entries mistakes and thankfully let Ren live on as an overarching villain. Or maybe something more? Speaking of the dark side, Finn is not only a perfect addition to our new story, but his character opens up a whole new world only considered by people reciting Kevin Smith dialogue. The stormtroopers are people? And even worse, they're actually brainwashed kids like the Hitler Youth? Yikes. Through Finn, we get to see the free will they may all possess if they're lucky enough to get a bloody hand wiped across their HUD. His meet-cutes with both Poe and Rey push our stories together and forward smoothly at the same time. I'm exceedingly happy with Oscar Isaac as our new dashing pilot. He's a great example of an actor that is so excited to be part of the Star Wars universe. He really enjoys himself. Which brings me to Rey. Ah, Rey. Accused of being this faraway galaxy's Mary Sue. I like to think we've established all of her abilities are either easily explained by her upbringing, or she's genuinely surprised by what she's capable of doing and she can thank the Force. Is she just a female Luke? Well, let's examine that. Luke grew up on a farm with his aunt and uncle and had at least a few friends we know of. So no, no, she's not. Her formative years couldn't have been more different. Her family left her at a very young age on a desert planet to fend for herself. She learned to scavenge on her own and adapted to her life as a loner. She may be wish fulfillment from our filmmakers, but not because she's invincible. It's because she has that starry-eyed look about her. She whines considerably less than our previous male protagonist, and she's a hero who deserves her success. I wouldn't change a thing about Rey, and I'm excited to see Daisy Ridley grow in the character she's created and excel in the Force. Whew. So, who needs a shot of insulin after all that positivity? I'm not saying this movie is perfect, by no means, but it's the Star Wars movie we all asked for. From the lack of anything or anyone resembling a Gungan with a speech impediment to the grimy, realistic, practical effects that we loved about the originals. I just get the feeling that everyone involved cares deeply for this world. And that's that. I will say that I'm a little sad to know that JJ won't be returning, but we're getting the director of Looper and some of the best Breaking Bad episodes. So throw some time travel and blue meth into episode 8, see if I care. But seriously, if Snoke isn't secretly Brian Cranston behind some hologram trickery, I'll be really disappointed. Because clearly Snoke isn't in the overthrowing Republic's business. He's in the Empire business. We shall see. Okay, how do we blow it up? There's always a way to do that. Han's right. In order for that...